Hello friends, today we will learn about biography, biogeography, that is biomes. The biome concept was introduced by Swiss Clemens and Selfold. Selfold. The dis distinct ecological community of plants and animals living together is a particular climate is called a biome. It is a level of organism between the landscape and biosphere. It is the largest geographic biotic unit and is named after the dominant type of life form such as tropical rainforest and grassland. A biome is composed not only of the climax vegetation but also of associated successional communities, persistent subclimax communities and fauna and soil. Thus, the biome concept embraces the idea of community of interaction among vegetation, animal populations, and soil. It may be defined as a major region of distinctive plant and animal groups well adapted to the physical environment of its distribution area. Differences in temperature or per precipitation determine the types of vegetation that grow in a given area. Biomes are classified into aquatic and terrestrial biomes. Some of the major terrestrial biomes in the world are tropical rainforest, deserts and tropical grasslands, temperate grasslands, temperate deciduous forest, Mediterranean scrub, coniferous, coniferous forest, chaparral and tundra. Tundra biomes. Tundra is a polar desert with very low temperature and low precipitation. There are two main types of tundra, arctic tundra and alpine tundra. The alpine tundra is found high on the mountains. Tundra biome is characterized by a short growing season or precipitation and permanently frozen deeper soil called permafrost. Plant life consists of grasses, sages, and lichen. Trees are absent. Desert biomes. Let's know about desert biomes. Deserts are found at lat latitudinal positions between 15 degree to 35 degree north and south of the equator and also in rain, for rain shadows. Deserts have annual precipitation less than 30 cm and low precipitation may be due to high subtropical pressure, geographical position in a rainy shadow and high elevation. There is a lot of visibility variability in desert types with lot with hot deserts, cold deserts, high elevation deserts and rain shadow deserts. Consequently, there is a great deal of variation in the biodiversity, productivity and organisms found in different types of desert. Most deserts are very hot. The hot deserts generally experience hot days and cold nights. Three types of plant forms are adapted to deserts, ephemeral, succulent and non-succulent. Let's know about tropical grassland. Savanna is grassland with scattered individual trees. Climate is the most important factor in creating a savanna. Savannas which result from climatic conditions are called climatic savannas. Savannas that are caused by soil conditions are called edaphic savannas. Savannas are always found in warm or hot climates where the annual rainfall is between 30 to 50 cm per year. The soil are porous having only a thin layer of nutrient rich matter called humus. Three major selective forces dominate the evolution of plant trees in savannas requiring fire periodic drought and grazing. 
there are frequent fire in the savanna and dominant vegetation is fire adapted temperate grasslands temperate grasslands are characterized as having grasses as the dominant vegetation trees and large soils are absent temperate grasslands have hot summers and cold winters and the amount of rainfall is less than in savannas as in the savanna seasons seasonal drought and occasional fires are very important to maintain biodiversity however their effects are not as dramatic in temperate temperate grasslands as as important to maintain biodiversity however their effects are not as dramatic in temperate temperate grasslands as they are in savannas the type of grassland community that develops and productivity of grasslands they are in savannas the type of grassland community that develops the productivity of grasslands depends strongly upon precipitation higher precipitation leads to tall grasses with a high biodiversity of grasses tropical rainforest tropical rainforest occur at low altitude zones near the equator found within 23.5 degree latitude of the equator and characterized by high temperature high rainfall and greatest diversity of species the average temperature is between 20 to 25 degree centigrade varies little through, throughout the year winter is absent annual rainfall exceeds 200 cm soil is nutrient poor and acidic decomposition is rapid and soil are subject to heavy leaching canopy in tropical forest is multilayered and continuous allowing little light penetration the dominant plants are phanerophytes that is trees lianas and epiphytes taiga biome taiga biome is located at higher latitude close to the polar region between 50 degree and 60 degree north latitudes and dominated by needle leaved drought tolerant evergreen trees winter is long and very cold and summer is short and cool precipitation occurs primarily in the form of snow that is 40 to 100 cm annually soil is thin nutrient poor and acidic the flora consists of consists mostly of cold tolerant evergreen conifers with needle like leaves such as pine fire and spruce taiga is the largest terrestrial biome on earth temperate deciduous forest biome the temperate deciduous forest consists of trees that lose their leaves every year the temperate deciduous forest has a temperate climate with moderate temperatures that have a distinct seasonal pattern temperate climate has found has four seasons that is winter spring summer and fall that is rainfall uh, precipitation precipitation of 65 to 130 cm is distributed evenly through throughout the year soil is fertile enriched with decaying litter now, now let's know about chaparral biomes chaparral is the name applied to the evergreen sclerophyllous hard that means hard leaved scrub vegetation chaparral biome is a scrubland biome of dense spiny evergreen scrubs found at mid latitudes along coast where cold ocean currents circulate absorb chaparral biome is characterized by mild rainy winters and long hot dry summers annual precipitation generally falls within the range of 30 to 50 cm let's know about climate climate is the long term pattern of weather in a locality region or even over the entire globe the term climate and weather have different meanings 
weather is the short term properties of atmospheric conditions for a specific place and time weather differ both spatially and temporally two of the most important factors determining an area climate are air temperature and precipitation the climate of a region will determine which plants will grow there and which animals will inhabit it we can describe climatic climate patterns on two scales macroclimate patterns on the global regional and local level and microclimate microclimate means which represents the climatic conditions in area of limited limited size such as the immediate surroundings of plants and animals macroclimate generally differs from the prevailing regional climatic conditions for example in the forest in a forest dense foliage reduces the amount of light reaching the ground this also results in a change air temperature changed air temperature profile in a forest now let's know about climatic zone climatic zone represents any of the geographical zones loosely divided according to the prevailing climate and latitude on the basis of variation in mean temperature along latitude the main climatic zones are tropical subtropical temperate and arctic and antarctic arctic and, and antarctic tropical means 0 degree to 20 degree latitude subtropical means 20 degree to 40 degree latitude temperature means 40 degree to 60 degree latitude and arctic and arctic uh, means 60 degree to 80 degree latitude the mean the mean temperature declines as we move from tropical and tropical to arctic region a similar climatic zonal zonation occurs with increasing latitude increasing altitude in the mountains the mountain look a mountain located in a tropical region with will successively have tropical subtropical temperate temperate and alpine zones with increasing altitude within each temperature based climatic zone the annual precipitation varies considerably Iceland biogeography biogeography is the study of geographical distribution of species and region for their pattern of distribution ecologist ecologist named robert macarthur and e o wilson proposed the equilibrium theory of iceland biogeography by by iceland we mean not only oceanic islands but also habitat islands on land such as the peak peaks of mountains and isolated springs in the desert the theory proposed proposes that the number of species on any island reflects a balance between the rate at which new species colonize it and the rate of the rate at which populations of established species become extinct the rate at which species might become extinct on the island would be related to the number that have become residents when an island is nearly empty the extinction rate is necessarily low because few species are available to become extinct there are two physical features of the island for the affect on immigration and extinction rates that is its size and its distance from the mainland the mainland in is where new immigration immigrant species originally inhabited inhabited some islands some islands have higher extinction rates as they generally contain fewer resources and less diverse habitats for colonizing species of pet partition larger habitat size reduces reduces the probability of extinction due to chance events larger islands contain larger habitat areas and opportunities for more different variants of habitat habitat heterogeneity increases the number of species that will be successful after immigration immigration is also affected by the distance of an island from the mainland
Iceland that are more isolated are like are less likely to receive immigrants than Iceland that are less isolated for two Icelands of equal size. An Iceland too close to main, mainland generally has a higher immigration rate than one further away. Thus, large Iceland may ultimately have a larger equilibrium number of species than small Iceland because immigration rates tend to be higher and extinction rates lower on large Icelands. Near Icelands tend to have larger equilibrium numbers of species than far Icelands because immigration rates to near Iceland are higher and extinction rate lower. Let's know about biogeography classification of India. Biogeographically, biogeography is the study of geographical distributions of organisms, the, their habitats and the environmental factors that produce them. Biogeographic classification of India was done by Roger and Panwar in 1988. Within India, the classification recognizes 10 zones divided into 26 provinces. The classification was done using various factors such as altitude, moisture, topography, rainfall, rainfall etc. Forest biogeographic zones are large distinctive units of similar ecology, biomes representation, community and species. Example in the Himalaya, the Western Ghats like this, whereas the biotic province is the secondary units within a zone, giving weight to particular communities separated by dispersal barriers and or gradual change in environmental factors. Example, Northwest and West Himalaya, either side of the Sutlej River. Biogeographic zones of India are Trans Himalayas with two provinces, Himalaya with four provinces, Indian desert with two provinces, semi arid zone with two provinces, Western Ghats with two provinces, Deccan Pe Peninsula with five provinces, Gantic Plain with two provinces, Coast with three provinces, Northeast India with two provinces, Iceland with two provinces, like the Trans Himalaya, Baltic Province. Biome Wildlife Himalaya Indian Desert Biotic Province Biome wild, uh, Wildlife Semi arid Biotic Provinces Biome Wildlife means Western Ghats Biotic Province Biomes um, Wildlife Deccan Peninsula Peninsula and Biotic Province Biome and Wildlife Thank you.